All right, so uh, I've got a new handout for you that we're going to look at and use. Whatever you're doing, you should then minimize everything to get back to the desktop, and we'll open the computer window again at the top left. And then open Classroom Data Drive Z. Scroll down to find our class, Campus SEO, and you want to drag a copy of this file I just put, Campus SEO 2 Webmaster Tools. I gave you number one last week, and now here's number two. So drag a copy of that to your desktop or flash drive. And when you copy it over, close the network folder, and you can print that a little bit later. So let's open that up and let's see what it's about. If you get any of these pop-ups over on the PDF viewer, just cancel them out. Okay, so there's a, there's a, this is a two-page document. You'll be able to print it a little later. Uh, and the first part is talking about the webmaster tools. Let's come back to page one in a moment. Let's look at page two first. So jump over to page two of the document. And here's a discussion on conversions, conversion goals. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that. So some terminology here. Conversions. I believe we've mentioned it before, but it's, it's okay to mention it again. Conversions, um, which is converting someone into something else. For example, someone visits my website, they have not bought anything, they have not been converted. Let's say I um, uh, gave my business card to someone, they haven't been converted yet, they haven't called me. So conversions are results, basically, <coughs> goals that you've reached. So goals you've reached. A conversion. They've been converted into something. I have here that I'm saying ultimately out of my website what I would like to do is to have people buy my baked goods. I'm trying to sell cupcakes for example. I need to convert them from non-buyers of cupcakes to buyers. But I have here, uh, I have many conversion goals before that point however these that I'm about to talk about, you don't have to do all of these, but these are various things to think about to, to, that you should do, should try to do, to help you to get to your ultimate goal. I have get followers on Twitter. Well, that assumes you have social media. So social media, Twitter. Get followers. The reason you want followers on Twitter or any social <coughs> network, followers are a captive audience. Marketing in the real world can be pretty hit or miss. That billboard on the five is being seen by a lot of people, but very few people are really going to care about that billboard. The people that are going to care most are the ones that need a plumber at that point. Everyone else, I don't need a plumber, I don't care about the billboard. But when you need that plumber, what was that phone number on that billboard? Well, social media is marketing 2.0. Marketing in the real world, marketing 1.0, is what we've seen all, all, our, all our lives about ads and all of that. Social media then is the new generation of that. <coughs> so to really distill it down into the smallest essence, social media is marketing. Social media is advertising. 
social media could be better than regular old marketing because here someone has chosen and agreed to be targeted, to be marketed to. When someone clicks follow on Twitter or Facebook, whatever, but when someone follows you on social media, they basically said, yes, I would like to see your content. Yes, I would like to see your pictures. Yes, I would like to see your ads. So the more followers that I get on Twitter, for example, the more of a captive audience of those that care about my message. These are uh, people that might care about your message or product or whatever most. And usually when I talk about social media, I have to talk about the 1% doctrine, which is out of all your followers, about 1% are the most active, are the most um, real, are the most legitimate. And by that I mean the ones that are most likely to really complete the ultimate conversion which is to buy the cupcake, to read my blog, to send me donations, to call me. Because it's very easy to click like or follow or whatever, but suddenly it's so much more hard to use the mouse to click buy. So with the 1%, if I've got 100 followers, what's 1% of 100? One. One person out of my 100 followers is, could be the one that really, really follows through and buys. Yes, it's a very low number, and that's just um, a starting point because you could have amazing content, you could have an amazing Twitter, you could have amazing pictures, and maybe you're closer up to 25%. Well, that's still 25 people out of 100. Maybe you're at 50%. Well, that's only half of all your followers. So that's why on social media like Twitter, you're just you're trying to accumulate more followers because that 1% would be the one that is the most active or, or real customer. <coughs> In the social media class, of course, we would talk about how to get followers. And then I'm saying, okay, another, another goal that I could be going toward is getting more social interactions on Facebook. This one assumes you have a Facebook. But many of the things that we do on, a, on social networks could be pretty interchangeable. I'm going to say Facebook, the largest social network of all. over 1.5 billion users. The population of the world is about six and a half billion. So one in six of the world uses Facebook. That's a lot of potential customers. So this assumes I've got Facebook, I'm posting stuff to Facebook, I'm using Facebook effectively, take the social media class, we talk about Facebook. But my goal here is that I'm trying to get social interactions. I'm trying to get likes, replies, shares. Share, oh, you mean like photos? And that's what I'm about to explain. So, um, I put them in this order also because I believe this is the order of importance. A like is simply when they click the thumbs up or they click the little heart or whatever. So basic interaction, the like. Then the next level is the reply. A reply. Someone comments on your content. So we're taking Facebook as the example, but let's say I share a picture I post a picture <coughs> on Facebook of a product. Someone could click like and move on. What else is there to look at? Maybe someone sees my picture and it's so great, they, they reply. They take the time to click reply and add something hopefully meaningful to the conversation. Perhaps they'll simply say great or cool or I like it. Or maybe someone will say that looks really good. How much does it cost? Or that's interesting. Do you have a website? You don't know, but this is a higher level where someone took more of an effort than a simple like. That's why I put them in those orders. Like, reply, share. 
higher level, is the share, also known as the reshare. On Twitter, it would be called a retweet, but it's a it's a reshare where uh, someone copies your content to their followers. Friends of friends. Uh, I have, let's say, 10 followers on Facebook. I posted something. Someone, one of those 10 people see it, they liked it so much, they then share it to their 100 followers or connections. So now I've reached, in essence, 110 possible people. My original 10 and the 100 of that connection friends of friends. Well, what if someone else, a friend of a friend, had 2,000 connections and then they shared it? Well, that's what's going, that's, that's known as going viral, isn't it? I've shared something, someone else shares it, someone else shares it, someone else shares it. It keeps going out, reaching more people. And what if that thing that I posted on Facebook was a link to buy a product? <coughs> I shared a great photo and a link to go buy the product, and it reached to so many people it went viral. That could be one of my goals. Ultimately, I'm trying to sell cupcakes. One of the possible ways to get to that point is I'm using Facebook, and I'm trying to get likes and replies and reshares. And then I mentioned get site visits via Google+. Get visits to your website through Google+. Here I'm mentioning Google+. Google's social network. Google+. Plus. Google has been around longer than Facebook, and Google has made a lot of people rich based on search. You search something so much so it's become genericized. You Google it. But remember, we don't use that terminology here. We're, we're much more open to it all. We search. But um, Google, their, ba their bread and butter is search. People type into their search engine, they find something. Well, then Facebook came about. People were using it and loving it and spending a lot of time on it. One and a half billion people use Facebook. And so you can spend your whole internet time just on Facebook. You can log into Facebook and play a game, watch videos and pictures, and send stuff to friends and family. You don't have to venture out of Facebook. Google saw this. Google saw people are using Facebook a lot. People are liking social networks a lot. Guess what? We're rich. We'll make our own social network. And they did. Google+. Plus. It has hundreds of millions of users, not a billion users like Facebook. Uh, every once in a while there's a network and they call it the Facebook killer. No one's going to reach Facebook. It's got so much momentum for good or for bad, no one's going to reach Facebook's level. But Google has tried very hard and they've gotten hundreds of millions of users. Uh, there's no exact stats, but it can be anywhere between 200 million and 500 million. Big range, but hundreds of millions of people are using Google. Plus. So, I need to think about getting my business on Google Plus. Get my business on Google Plus. Because guess what? Google Plus would, I mean, Google Search would like to promote its Google properties more than the competition. Google is going to claim they don't do that and that all results are equal. But uh, cynically, and also via trade journals, we can see that that's not quite true. Sometimes Google properties show up a little bit higher than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so I've spent some time on Facebook and Google+. Plus. Um, I'm not saying that Google's always going to win out, but when I conduct these searches and read these trade journals and such, it, it happens. We see that if we do a Google search on day one, Remember when we saw, we did a search and we saw a nice little box with a little map and reviews. That's Google+. Plus. That's not coming from Facebook. That's coming from Google+. Plus. It can give you the quote-unquote spotlight. That, that call-out box, that, that spotlight box with a map. You're a, 
you're you're a dot on the map. You've got star ratings and all of that. That's from Google Plus, which is free. So getting my business on Google Plus could get me more traffic to my website. It's free. Why not set it up? That's one of my conversion <coughs> goals here. Ultimately, I'm trying to sell those cupcakes, but one of the stepping stones to get to that point is put my company on Google Plus. Another stepping stone. Get more hits on my home page. Well, this, this almost is a no-brainer. Get traffic to my website to make money from my website. Of course. But I put it here blatantly because on your home page, on your website, is where you have the most control. When you're on anyone else's network, technically you're following their rules. When you create that Facebook account, there's that thing about click here to read the terms of service. No one reads it, everyone agrees. Every time you use any of these networks, no one reads the fine print, everyone agrees. In the fine print, there's a lot of fine print, and there's a lot of possibility or cause for you to get kicked out of the network. Technically, like for example on Facebook, there are personal profiles and there are business pages. If you don't set yourself up properly, technically, you could get shut down. You set up your, uh, your, you set up your company on Facebook the wrong way and it could get shut down and you lose all those likes, you lose all that traffic, etc. In the social media class we would talk about how to set it up properly, but <coughs> not to avoid playing by someone else's rules, then you have your own website. You have your own website where you can put all your content how you want, how you want to control it, and also on 99% of the social networks you cannot sell directly to the user, to the customer. I can put my products on Facebook. I can put my products on Instagram and I can put my products on YouTube, whatever, but I'm not, there's no actual buy button on YouTube. There's no buy button on Instagram. And these things are changing. They're, they're, this will change eventually once the companies figure out how it's most profitable for them. But at the moment, if you want to really sell anything, you still have to direct them back to your website or to your eBay or Craigslist or Etsy, whatever. But still, to your website is where you have the most control, where you can sell your products, solicit donations, get people to sign up for your newsletter, uh, sign up for your nonprofit organization, whatever. That's where you're going to complete, that's where you often complete your ultimate goal. I can't sell that cupcake directly on Google+. Plus. I still have to guide them back to my website. So then it's obvious, get people to my website. And I have to say it because sometimes people come into the, the class and say, well, do I really need a website? I have so many followers on Twitter and so many likes on Facebook. Do I really need a website? It's going to depend on the person, of course. But most of the time, yes, because that's where you're going to sell your product. That's where you're going to get the donations or whatever your ultimate goal is. And usually your website is not free. You're going to get it at one of these providers but then it's like owning the house instead of renting the house. If it's your house, you can paint it whatever ugly color you want, but if you're renting it, you have the rules of the owner to abide by. Get more shares on my blog posts from my site. So this one assumes blogging. So one possible conversion. Blogs. Again, create articles on a regular basis. Full of keywords that people search for <clears throat> to get you traffic to your site. Create content, create articles, and make it easy for
for people to share to their social networks, social media. You write a great article, and you better have a button there for someone to tweet it. You better have a button there for someone to share it to LinkedIn. You should have some way on your website for them, for your readers, to be able to share to their contacts. Free advertising, free marketing, going viral. So if you've got these articles on your website that people are reading, you can get more traffic from them by making it easy for people to then share to their social media. In the blogging class, we talk about strategies, about ideas for blogging, and more of that in-depth. But blogging is important for modern SEO. Here's something to think about. Get subscribers to my newsletter. Here I said specifically coupon newsletter, which doesn't apply to everyone. But get subscribers to a newsletter. This one assumes a newsletter. <coughs> a way for people to agree to let you market to them in their inbox. The point of why every website is asking you to subscribe is because they're basically asking you for an email address so that then they could send you emails about a product or an offer or something. And a legitimate person is not going to go buy one of these bulk email lists of stolen emails. A legitimate person is going to have um, a legitimate email, a, a newsletter system that someone could subscribe to get content. Depending on your website software, WordPress for example, you can make, you can make it very easy that when someone subscribes, they will, get, they will get a copy of every new blog post, every new article. You don't have to create a brand new newsletter. It can be based on the blogs that you've been writing. So that means you'll need to entice people to give you their email. So not good. If you have it in the little subscription box that it simply says subscribe now. That's not a very good to way to entice people. Here's a better way. Subscribe for exclusive content. Here's another better way. Become a VIP. Subscribe now. Some way to entice people to give you their email address. The subscribe now is not really any of an incentive. But if I'm saying you're going to get exclusive content, that could work. If I'm saying this is VIP information, subscribe, that could work. Think about yourself. Are you subscribed to any newsletters or you know coupon lists? <coughs> I'm subscribed to the Fry's Electronics uh, newsletter, and I love it and I hate it because every time I get it, I want to buy something <laughs> because it comes with an exclusive coupon or I save 20% off or whatever. Uh, I can't buy that particular piece of technology at the cheaper price unless I have my unique code, and I get a unique code by subscribing to the newsletter. They have me in their database. I chose to give them my email, and every week, or so, I get an email, a newsletter from them, and it tells me what's for sale, and I have to remember I have to pay the rent first. <laughs> but uh, that's a way to entice people, give them something in return for that email address, because then you could use that to further market to them directly. So, 
more powerful. WordPress, if you use WordPress, it has a basic email newsletter system. But more powerful newsletter systems are MailChimp.com and ConstantContact.com. There's other ones, of course. Those are two off the top of my head. Constant Contact. These allow you very powerfully to accumulate a list of contacts and send them out emails and it'll it can track who opened the email and who didn't and if they didn't open the email to send another version that is maybe more enticing or maybe send an email two months later if someone hasn't read one of the emails recently those are very powerful and there's free and paid versions of them the paid versions of course are more powerful or more robust In my case, I want to get virtual clients, which are followers, to come to my physical location. So I've got a, uh, a shop on Main Street where I'm selling my cupcakes. Um, a lot of good that my 10,000 Twitter followers are doing me. I can't email them a cupcake. They have to come to the store to buy the cupcake. So this doesn't apply to everyone, but this is... Uh, local traffic getting their online followers or fans to visit your real location. Using the local search feature of social media. You can use Twitter and search for people talking about a topic and narrow it down to location like zip code. On Facebook, you can target your posts to be visible by people in a certain location. And so I have all of these followers on Instagram, <coughs> but I need to target the ones that are local, that they can drive to my location. So most of the networks have some way to do local search. This finally, ultimate conversion goal, sell bait goods. It's a big jump from the, from the very first idea that I want to sell bait goods to actually selling them. And so all of these steps here you don't have to do all of them. Some of them might not quite make sense for your business, that's fine. But the more of these that you think about and engage in, the more possibility that you're going to reach that ultimate conversion goal. You should see that it's a long, involved process. Not necessarily difficult, but it's a long, involved process to get from point A, a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z the follower visits the store and buys a product. This is why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. So it's not just what you do on your website, that's SEO, it's what you do outside of your website, SEM. There's the mention of Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, um, the coupon newsletter, all of that. So SEO, SEM, very important. And if you take a look at that article here, I have a, an article over at Forbes where, where it defines this concept of mar marketing in the modern web uh, after the ad. And then it gives ideas, it explains what it is, and then uh, it gives ideas like infographics, having a web page, doing podcasts. Again, you can read each one of these, follow the links. These are possible ways of inspiration about what you could do. How could you get the word out to more people? You know, record a free weekly or monthly or bi-weekly show. It's called a podcast. Like a little radio show, five minutes, ten minutes, forty minutes, whatever. Putting it out there, you, you've got a platform for your product.
creating videos, books, <clears throat> because we're seeing here the final goal that they have is buy. The customer makes a decision to buy. Well, there are all of these things beforehand. They become aware of you, that they exist. They check you out. Who are you? What are you about? They consider you as a possibility to buy from you. And then eventually, hopefully, they buy. <clears throat> So any questions on the notes or page two of our current document? So relatively short page, but with a lot of content and a lot to think about and a lot to engage in. Let's say we we do this. Let's say we use Google Plus or where we write blogs. How do we know what's effective? How do we know if we're reaching an audience? How do we know that we're not wasting our time? How do we know that we're being successful? One measurement, of course, is that I look at the cash register and I see our sales have gone up. That's, of course, the, hard, the hardest one to get to. So, backing up to page one, are more ways that we can measure our success using the Webmaster Tools. Google and Bing offer us Webmaster Tools ways for us to check how many hits did we get, how much traffic, where is our traffic coming from, how much time did someone spend on our site, which pages were most popular. Knowledge is power and these webmaster tools will give us a lot of knowledge in order to give us the power to do something about it. To see our efforts on Facebook compared to Twitter show that we're very effective on Twitter. So that means are we going to keep are we going to keep using Twitter more and more and diminish the role of Facebook? Or does that mean we're going to increase our efforts on Facebook, decrease on Twitter? <clears throat> I don't know what answer to give until I look at the data. This is the part then that we will set these tools up. So we're going to shift gears a little bit to talk about setting these tools up. So let's back up to page one. 